Good morning and good afternoon to all of those of you who are on this webinar with RevCycle Partners, making eligibility and benefits verification work for your practice. Hello, my name is Dave Getz and I work in marketing with RevCycle Partners and I will be your host today along with Paul Harchi who will be assisting me. And we are so grateful that you've carved out a chunk of your time today to be with us on this webinar. I think you'll find it very, very helpful. We have two big segments uh, of this webinar. One is our interview uh, with Dr. Wayne Gilmore. And then after that, we're also gonna show you a demo, a demo to see exactly how uh, we verify and uh, eligibility and benefits verification works within Revolution EHR. But before I introduce our panelists, we have three housekeeping items. The first is simply that you are on mute and so you can continue to listen to Freebird in the background if you want. Um, the second piece is that you can send us your questions via the, the chat box and I will take those questions. Paul and I will help assist and answer those questions at the end of the webinar, but be sure to actually ask those questions on the fly as you think about them, as you think about them send them to us, and then we will collect them and, and, and ask Dr. Gilmore and Cindy those questions at the, end of the, uh, at the end of the webinar. The last thing is that we are being recorded, so if you need to jump off for any reason, uh, we will send you a follow-up email and you can forward it on to others who might, you might think it, it could be beneficial. So with that, I would like to introduce our panelists today. The first uh, panelist is Dr. Wayne Gilmore of Eye Care Associates of Parsons, and that is Parsons, Kansas. So Dr. Gilmore, so grateful that you are here. Welcome to the webinar. Hi, thanks, Dave. I appreciate it. Um, I practice with uh, another optometrist, Craig Newland, and uh, we're in rural Kansas, southeast corner of Kansas. Um, I've been here 22, this will be my, starting my 23rd year here coming up, and um, you know, I'm married, uh, father of four, I have triplets that are be 22 on the 29th of March, and triplets, and, I know, know we're, we're great planners, we, uh, we also have a seven-year-old, so we plan everything in our lives really well, and, um, and uh, if you know me, those that know me on here would attest to that, but, um, and then I, you know, I love to practice optometry, I love, I love, uh, the internet and uh, discussion online and and I'm a runner so I'm I'm patiently awaiting to see if I got in the Boston Marathon this year so that's what I do with my spare time. Wow that, that I hope you get that that uh, I know that's something that Paul Hartje uh, aspires to at some point so before we uh, move on you mentioned something at uh, where we were talking prior to this uh, to the webinar about that you had changed the from a buzzer to a lock, and it was so symbolic of some of the changes in your practice. Could you just discuss that or talk about that a little yeah. bit? Yeah, you know, this the, when this all hit, you know, a year ago this week, right? I mean, I think the CDC came out with their recommendations right about now about closing. Um, it just so happened, um, the guy that lived across the street from us, he uh, you know, he contracted COVID, and he was actually the second Kansan to die. So it hit me like a, a brick wall, you know, real quick, and and, uh, you know, and the CDC came out with their stuff. Of course, we all closed and we closed till May 4th, except for emergencies, had the door locked. And, and you know, like everybody else, watched webinars and talked and thought and figured out how we're going to do this safely. And, and um, you know, I kind of decided we're going to we're gonna keep the front door locked. And so and we did that. And then on, on ODs on Facebook, I started asking about a buzzer, you know, what people, you know, what was out there, you know, I was Googling and. And somebody recommended this this company, this maglock, and so we installed a, a a magnet lock on our door, so it's you know it's unlocked, but you can't open it because there's a magnet keeping it closed. And so our front desk had clickers, and they would open it for patients. And so we utilized two-way texting with with Weave, and and um, anyway, so that's that's how we've operated all all through limited access and and all that, and. Um, but we got up that it allowed us to get up to a full capacity really quick when we opened. We just we just learned how to move people through and and um, um, we essentially practiced. We just limited who was in the building. The people that were in here were the people that needed to be in here. And we practiced at full capacity from almost the get go. And uh, that's what I was saying online. We just we took the buzzer off yesterday. So we'll see how things go. We're going to you know, we're still going to limit. You know, we're not going to allow posses to come with patients yet. but. 
we're going to, you know, still limit who comes in, but, you know, our front door is open. And it, it was a tremendous stress on our staff. I mean, having to do curbside and schedule dispenses and, and all that stuff was, was, was dramatic in terms of the, the stress it put on everybody. But, you know, that's, you know, we've fought, you know, we've done that and so far so good. Wow. So taking, just taking away the buzzer, that, that, that is such a symbol of hope. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's, that's really doing. awesome. Yeah. Well, let's move to, um, I want to move to Cindy Miller. Cindy Miller is the We Verify Manager here at, at RevCycle Partners. And so she's really our expert um, in eligibility and benefits verification. And she will be the one uh, directing traffic on our demo in just a little bit. Cindy, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Okay. Um, I'm, I'm actually in Virginia and um, I'm married and have three grown children and we have a small farm. So we keep, we keep pretty busy, um, pretty interesting around here during the days. Um, I've had 25 plus years experience in the medical field, um, billing insurance and verification of insurance benefits. And the last seven years I've spent in optometry. Wow. Well, thank you so much for that. We're really looking forward to uh, your walking us through uh, the We Verify process and Revolution EHR. Thank you so much. And last but certainly not least is Paul Harchi. Uh, Paul is the CEO of RevCycle Partners. He and uh, Christine Schneider actually founded RevCycle within Revolution EHR. I think it was in 2012. Paul, maybe you can give us a little bit more color and introduce yourself. Sure. Thanks, Dave. Yeah, uh, Paul Harchie here. And uh, as Dave said, uh, we started RevCycle inside of Revolution EHR. I was the uh, uh, chief operating officer at Rev from oh, about 2008 um, to about 2018. So about 10 year run uh, and, and really uh, enjoyed what we were able to accomplish at Rev. Um, got really uh, interested and excited about uh, RCM space and what, uh, what the opportunities were there. And for various reasons and changes uh, within the kind of Rev priorities, uh, there was an opportunity for Christine and I to spin RevCycle out as an independent company. So we're totally separate from the Rev uh, folks, uh, supporting other platforms and things like that, but still working really closely from a marketing perspective and a partner perspective and and uh, excited uh, about the opportunity to, to speak to the Rev base today. Uh, like Dr. Gilmore, I'm a runner, but unlike Dr. Gilmore, I have no expectations of getting in Boston. I could not come close to that qualifying time. I'm a, I'm a uh, late life plotter, I guess is the best way to describe my running, but uh, I'm looking forward to it. So that's if, me that, if, that, if that's true, what does that make me, Paul? Um, I'm even worse. <laughs> well, thank you so much. We have this great webinar in store, so let's just jump in and begin with our first question, and that is for Dr. Gilmore. When did you first realize that eligibility benefits verification really needed to be a priority in your practice? Probably the first time I was an optometrist in private practice and it went to the dentist, so a long time ago. I mean, it's, you know, you go to the dental office, and at least my dentist is, I mean, they know to the penny what I owe before. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm with the dentist and they say I need a crown or a filling or whatever. And, you know, of course, I'm sitting there for a few minutes, but they come back and bam, they have the information. They know it's what my insurance is going to pay, what I'm going to pay. And, you know, they never let you out the door without paying it. So so I've always, know, you know, saw the importance of, of having that information and and. Um, but always struggled on getting that information. And, and um, of course with the vision plans, you know, that's, that's all right there. So that's pretty easy. It's the, the medical stuff. And the more medical you do, the, you know, the more that's an issue. And so, and, and we have, you know, we have 10 employees, two doctors, um, you know, we do probably between us both hundred and, I don't know, 120 to hundred and, you know, 40 eye exams a week plus, you know, office visits, you know, medical office visits on top of that glaucoma checks, all that stuff. So, um, so quite a bit of medical and, you know, or, you know, I see the statements that are printed out every month and, and, um, you know, I just finally, you know, just 
we needed we needed more information so and couldn't get it all in one source so i started looking for companies and and interesting you know paul and i met i'm you know i kind of go to a lot of shows and stuff and i think paul i think when i got when we finally got with revolution i've been on emr since 1999 and i think when we finally went with revolution i've been i've been following rev since it was i code right way back and you know, mid <laughs> mid two thousands, John Warren and Opcom List and some of those folks. But um, uh, but Paul, I think when I got, I think we, I think you were still with Rev, and I, I think I reached out to you first, if I remember right, to say, hey, we yeah. want to, we want to get into Rev. So, yep. you know, so Paul and I had a relationship a little bit from that, and then, um, anyway, so that's kind of how it kind of kind of how it happened with with Rev Cycle. But I. It's something, and you know, I didn't want to part with the money too. I mean, there is an expense there, but you got to, you know, put value to your staff's time. And, and once we've done that, um, you know, anyway, it become, allows our staff to spend more time with patients and we'll get into some of that, but it's been a long time. I just finally bit the bullet here, uh, probably year, year, year and a half ago. You made a great statement and I'm not sure where you made this, maybe it was in an email thread or somewhere, but you said something to the effect that the cost of sending a statement is much more than the price of a stamp. And so what are some of the hidden costs of perhaps not implementing an eligibility and benefits, really a system in your practice, like, like, like the dentists have? Yeah. So if I'm going to be held to everything I say online, then <laughs> we're going to have problems. Um, but some some people that know what me will, will attest to that too but um but no I, I you know and this was this was actually my former partner he he actually said this a long time ago and and um you know but if you think about it and i talked to my my the person that does this for us today again um but you think about it you 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 print off the statements there's there's you know there's time there and then um, and, and expense and all that. And then you stuff the envelopes and then you put the stamp on it. So right there, just, just in that, if you talk about ink and never, I mean, you're, you're about at a dollar right there at least. And, um, and then, and I ask, and we go through, and we always have, um, we go through every, you know, somebody goes through every statement to make sure that, um, make sure the insurance was filed to make sure that secondary had been used or applied, to make sure the balances are correct, you know, to go through all that. And, and we have had so many statements, it was, that was a two day process because you're also taking care of patients, you're answering the phone because this person doesn't, isn't dr directly involved with patient care, but like everybody else, and we have an automated phone thing, it doesn't matter, the phone rings all the time. So, you know, all those things, it takes her two days to do that, a month. And, so there's a value there. She could be doing other things. And um, so her time was worth, you know, like I said, so much money. And, and so we decided that, you know, having that information and, and, and also collecting co-pays and collecting, I'm, I'm sure you guys have the statistics, I don't know, but I, I know historically from us, collecting 20 and 25 and $50 is not easy. And you're, you're sending a lot, putting a lot of time and energy in collecting that they should be collected on the front side. So um, that's that's kind of what I meant. The time invested in creating a statement, reviewing the statements, mailing the statements, and and then you know processing those payments again and, and all that stuff. When it could all be done, a lot of it could have been done on the front side. And um, so that's that's kind of what I meant by that. Hey, Dr. Gimler, did you do you feel after giving focus and this is, isn't necessarily you know using us, but but just you know putting a focus on the the verification topic, have, have you found your practice reducing the number of statements they have to, to, to it, gen because because you're able to get the co-pays? I mean, that's the theory we ha would have, but yep. you're you know, one of the front lines. So I, I again, I reviewed that. I, I asked Jamie that all the time. Jamie is my, my lady that, that does this and she's worked for us since 05, kind of worked her way up. But um, uh, I asked her that and, and yes, we have. We're not to the, you know, to the impressive number yet we're not there we're not you know we were about between four and five hundred we're we're under 400 um so we've cut it we've cut it probably 20 percent but i'm going to tell another reason we did this 
is we have kind of four people up front at our front desk. We have four people. We have each of us have a tech and we have a check in person and a checkout person. And we are, rel- I mean, pretty busy, I, I, you know, I think at least. And so um, but so we, we used to always have the same person at checkout. And that was kind of our safe, safe harbor, safe harbor is we had the same person there. So they knew it inside and out and they they knew what Blue Cross does what and you know, they're, they're more experienced at it. And, and it was just kind of a, it was nice and comfortable and easy, but then it all gets messed up when somebody's sick or, or whatever. So we really like to have all four of those people cross train equally. And it always was hardest at the checkout. And so this was another thing that played into that. If, if they all have all that data right there in those different spots in rev, then if they, you know, a lot of that thinking's taken away from them. So, um, so we, we have all those four people rotate every day. So my tech is not the same. We rotate our techs and, and that way they're not in the same spot every day. And, and that's how, and also we're so much, it's so much easier when somebody's out and during the COVID thing, you know what I mean? It's just, it's just worked for us and having those people all completely cross-trained at the, on the, on the medical side or the, the, not the optical side, but the, I call it the medical side, the, the exam side. And, um, that, that's that been really nice for us is having everybody cross trained. And like I said, that they don't quite have to be, you know, they have more, they have more there for them. And it made, has, has made that transition easier. If that answers your question. Sure. So this builds on, on what you just said. Um, one is the tedious aspects of eligibility and benefits verification, but um, what, what, in terms of implementing it, when you decided to give it focus, maybe even prior to engaging, uh, we verify what made it tedious. One, I think, is what you're saying is that it, a lot of this content resides in the head of someone, like knowing about uh, Blue Cross and Blue Shield, etc. Any other um, parts of of implementing this uh, are tedious or became tedious? Well, I mean, in breaking habits with the staff is still hard in terms of, and, and I think we all, at least, you know, it's, you know, it's always the easy things. So they don't want to mess with it. Kind of the line is, and, and they still do it. So we actually, this has caused us to have some t- conversations, but um, we'll just file it with your insurance and get back to you. You know, and that, that's yeah. something that that's the line that we've all, everybody has said here um, at my office, at least that's kind of the line, especially when you're crunched for time, it's, gosh, I don't want to go call or I don't want to look this up or, you know, and it, it even if we were very, and some guys will say, oh, or ladies will say, you know, we, our staff takes the time to call every insurance like the dental office does. And we get all this information and well, it's something's going to give when things, when people are out or things are slow or whatever. And then for us, it wasn't worth the fight. And that information is all there consistently. Um, but we have to make sure our staff is getting in the insurance cards ahead of time to make sure that stuff, when that appointment's made, they can't be lazy. They can't, they have to verify insurance on the phone when they make the appointment to make sure that data is there for, for, for you guys to pull. And um, so that's been something, but also just making sure they're diligent about collecting those copays and not being lazy and saying, Hey, we'll just file insurance and get back to you. Cause that honestly, that's happening still. Hmm. That's and kind that's of on a psychological. Yeah, that's kind of a psychological barrier where it's just easier to, in a sense, kick the can down the road. That way you don't have to say, well, you owe us $35. Yeah, so we're going to have, you know, like I said, we've, we're doing it better and it, we've seen less, but we're not to the impressive number yet that I can, you know, hopefully you'll have me back one day, you know, if, if I'm not too much of a bust. And then and we can, t- we can show how, how impressive it is because I know they have, they have some practices that have been doing this well and um, have some pretty impressive statistics in that regard. And, 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 I, and, and, and quite honestly, we have some new people up front. And so we need to, and we haven't something else we haven't done. We used to have, we used to have monthly training sessions and we've taken those away. We're doing, we did some split shifts and we've done all kinds of weird things with our schedule this last year. And, and, um, but we need to show them the, you know, show them the value of, again, what we're talking about, what, what this is costing us for per patient but also why we're doing it because it's saving us money on the back end, you know, and, and, um, and uh, so anyway, that's kind of where we are on that. Is there any other area where practices tend to get 
really hung up in the process, and you, you've talked a little bit about that, but I just wanted to follow up to see if there was any other places where you found that uh, you either anecdotally from others or yourself where practices tend to get hung up in this verification process. You know, I just think it's, you know, having enough people, um, having the resources, um, you know, it, and I've talked to Paul and, and, and Cindy about this too. The, 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 the thing I wish we had is, is, and, and is, you know, cause we, I would say maybe not 10 a day, but we probably have 20 a week of people that have an appointment or a medical office emergency or something that gets scheduled the same day, or we have a cancellation yeah. and we call them or, or whatever. And that, and so we're, those are, there's 20 a week, so it's a hundred a month that we don't have that information. So, yeah. you know, if we had that, if we knew how to go looking at all these places, then we could get it ourselves. Um, I don't think we would have the discipline or the time to do it for everyone, but that, that is a, that is a kind of an issue that, you know, we yeah, have at least. Stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Right. yeah. So you can remember before you outsourced uh, E&B verification and now after, um, now after, well, since you've, you've outsourced it, why, why should a practice consider outsourcing the, pro the process? You know, I think it, again, there's value in the time of your employees. The, the more time my, me or my staff is looking up at an, looking up at a patient, working with the patient versus looking down at a computer or on the phone is, is improve customer service. It improves a patient's experience. And so there's value there. It frees them up to do other things that need to be done that are important, that are more, again, everything more focused on the patient. I think that those are, those are to me, big things. Um, you know, we don't have an ex, you know, as far as in billing, you know, we, we're not talking about, you know, the, the coding and billing stuff yet or on this part, but you know, that those things are kind of behind the scenes deals, but, I know we would have an extra person at least, you know, if we had to do that, you know, with, with this and with Bill, you know what I'm saying? So I think it saves us, yeah. save us an FTE for sure. Um, if we're doing it right, um, we would have another FTE, no question about it in our, in our, in our practice. Um, but, you know, more time with the patients, more looking up, dealing with the patients and, um, you know, less, less time on, on those things that, um, you know, freeing that, freeing that time up. Yeah, I, I don't know what's your experience in your practice, uh, Dr. Gilmore, in your, in your region, but boy, we're talking to a lot of folks these days, uh, whether it be on the billing or eligibility side, and and they're and, and, and I assume it's a bit of a, a bit of a COVID, um, you know, effect, but they're they're really struggling with staffing, you know, just just yeah. getting people hired and 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 then the training side of it, and so the. You know, the, the outsourcing so, aspect helps help, can help them. So I, I'm, you know, I'm on the hospital board here, and and we have a whole set of coders there, and and all that stuff, and and um, and you know, getting people trained and and doing that. But like in a for a private practice, I'm amazed more people don't. And this is kind of a plug for 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 RevCycle, but I mean to have a and we had one for a while, but to have an experienced um, coder that it, biller and coder type person that keeps up with it with all the changes and is on top of their game you know it's just that's a that's a pretty and we live in rural kansas so that is a that skill set's hard to come by i mean it's hard enough to find somebody with experience that's that's adjusted a pair of glasses um so it it's you know the it's the billing side is a no-brainer in terms of the the uh and on the medical billing side of mm -hmm. having somebody do it because that's that's a definite high-end fte type person and um so that's been a no-brainer and this just adds to it you know yeah well that's been this is terrific terrific help to uh to us in this webinar is there anything you want to uh close this portion of the webinar with anything um that we missed or questions that we should have asked you know i don't think so i think you know and i i'm, I'm assuming there's a lot of revolution folks on here i think that you know y'all you know, you're not part of revolution, but you're kind of a spinoff or, or whatever a company that's kind of saw a need and it works really seamless in revolution. That's what's kind of cool. It all works. You're not, you're not, you know, the messages are sent within rev. It's all, 
you guys are working in Rev. And it really is a seamless integration, which I think is, you know, really, really neat and, um, you know, sleek in that regard. You know, I'm in Rev and I see a message. I, I got three I need to respond to right now, as I sit here, that are, you know, billing questions on, you know, I put on a, I put on a OCT, I did a macula instead of an optic nerve or anyway, things that they've caught that, hey, saying, hey, what's this? And I fix it and send it right back to them. And it's all within Rev. So I don't have to click in and out and the patient's reverenced. And so that the integration pieces, I think for revolution is awesome, you know, uh, you know, alone with all the other, other stuff. Thank you so much, right. Dr. Gilmore. I just want to say once again, that if you have questions, be sure to, to post them. Uh, and I will get them and, and we will ask Dr. Gilmore at the end of this webinar. We are perhaps at the midway point. Paul, I want to transition to you and and Cindy. And why don't you lead us in the next uh, portion of the sure. of the webinar? Uh, sounds good. Thanks. Um, so, yeah, I, I, you know, coming up, we're going to do a brief overview on the We Verify service. And then I'll have Cindy do a demo so she, you know, she can show and you guys can see you know, what this looks like inside a REV and where you'd find the information and what the information looks like. Um, so at a high level, you know, most people know us for our billing service. Uh, that's um, where, you know, where we started as, a, as, a, as an outsourced RCM service. And, you know, that's where most customers use that, of ours use that service. And we verify is, is, is you know, very similar in concept, um, but for the front end verification and eligibility side, you know, and so, if you out, you know, practice like Dr. Gilmore said, outsources um, that piece to us, you know, gets a dedicated resource focused on verification. And so all of those benefits of letting your staff focus on the patient side of it while we're focused on, uh, on this uh, verification pieces. Uh, we verify um, uh, every patient that's on your schedule. So we're logging into Rev and, and staying in front of your schedule, if you will, and we verify Every patient on the schedule, uh, at least two days in advance. Um, it's often we get out, um, uh, you know, even further than that, but um, we guarantee it that they'll be they'll be verified uh, two days prior to, to their appointment. Uh, Dr. Gilmore raises a good point. We don't we don't currently have a way to assist the practice on kind of same day walk-ins or or ch changes just from the real time na nature of that. Um, but we 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 work the schedule and guarantee two days in advance. We're verifying and grabbing benefits for both the medical and vision payers. Um, and so we'll grab, as Cindy will show, um, you know, the benefits on both sides of, 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 the, of that. Um, in the vision side, we're often able to gather um, uh, vision benefits for you know, that patients don't even know they have. You know, maybe it's a maybe it's a vision rider on a on a Blue Cross plan or something like that that they're not even aware of, or or maybe it's their spouse has a plan uh, that they're not not aware of, and, and we're able to find some some of those benefits. And and you know I think the real value comes in the in the fact of the of the, the the details of the benefits that we're able to capture and and the consistent nature that we're able to put it in inside a revolution in an easily understood format. We've talked to a number of practices where this is a shared responsibility, uh, and depending on who's you know gathering the benefits, the, the actual data may show up uh, in a different format or different locations, and so by uh, uh, letting our team take care of this topic, um, you, you get you know, get the same uh, same set of data every every time, and ultimately the, the you know the real value proposition comes from freeing up your staff uh, to focus on the patient side and 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 do the in 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 office stuff. So at a high level, that's what uh, uh, we verify service provides. Uh, let me uh, hand this over to Cindy for a little demo here. Gonna make you presenter, Cindy. Let me know we got it. Okay. There you go. Everybody see my rev screen? Not I don't yet. know about everybody, but I can see it. So <laughs> go <Okay>. for it. <laughs> okay. All righty. So what we do is that we work in the appointment in the appointment area, and for for the demo, we have a couple set up that I'm gonna go through and show you, and I pulled in my my location and what the date um, of service that I'm going to be working on and that we're going to be looking at you know all of our all of our statuses over here so when we search that and we come up 
this is what these are the patients that come up on this day and how we actually start is we go in and we look at the patient's insurance and this patient had um, United Healthcare and so once we get that benefit, we use what we call scripts, and we have scripts written for each insurance company. Occasionally, they'll vary just a little bit. For the most part, it's strictly the same across the board for all of our offices. Um, so we'll have, you know, we'll list what the routine copays are, um, and we'll let you know if on this patient's medical insurance that they have a vision rider. So they may have a rider that lets them have one uh, vision eye exam per year. And then we'll let you know if that exam is available. So sometimes they have it, but maybe they've used it somewhere before they get to you. So anytime we find a routine benefit for vision under a medical plan, we're going to list that information out for you. Uh, we're going to list the PCP and the specialist copays. We're going to if this was in this particular case the deductible is met if it had not been met we would have you know whatever the remaining is so if they have five hundred dollars and they have two hundred remaining that information is going to be there for you so that information is in the detail section so somebody at your front check-in this is probably where they're going to be looking the other place that we put this information is we fill in everything here under the basic coverage information. So what the exam copays are, what the deductible is, um, you know, we're going to make sure that, you know, we have all of the correct numbers, group numbers, because that does make a difference sometimes. So we're going to have all of that there. And then the next place we're going to actually put that information is under the patient benefit tab and it's going to all be listed here and we and we put this in three different places with the same information because somebody at the front desk is probably going to be looking in that detail area like i just showed you um you know the doctor is probably going to have an encounter pulled up and be able to see it in that second area but then optical is probably going to be looking somewhere completely different when they get over to handle materials so in this case, this patient actually had United Healthcare. And how we do this is once we get all that information, we put it in there, we copy this information, and then we put it here and we save that. And let's close. And let's see if I can get it to. Let's see if I can get it to go for me. No, of course not. <laughs> Usually it'll do it. Sorry about that. So let's go back to our area here. And believe me, I get tripped up on our new screen sometimes too. So, okay, it, well, it did what it should have done a minute ago. So we've marked this one that it's verified and you can see that the shield will actually turn, turn green. Everything's okay with this patient. We got all the information. If you hover over anything that's turned green, it's gonna list all that information right there for you again, but your office staff's gonna know that this has already been taken care of. This patient's ready to be seen from an insurance standpoint. And that's just on, on the medical. On this patient, we're actually looking at a VSP and a Blue Cross Blue Shield. And so you're going to see both pieces of information in the detail section. This particular patient, their Blue Cross Blue Shield was inactive. And then their VSP information is here for VSP. We have an auth number. We list out the co-pays, contact lens fits, your frame allowances, and all of those things. But we also need to say in the insurance pod, this Blue Cross Blue Shield is no longer active. So we're going to go here and we're going to actually deactivate that. So when somebody in your office goes to look, the only thing that's in here in the insurance pod now is what is actually active. So again, all that information is going to go here. 
and for vision, we're still going to fill in all of this information to let you know, you know, what all the copays are. We're going to have the authorization number listed and the authorization date, whether the routine exam, contact lenses, frames, um, you know, any materials, whether they are available or not. But for vision, we're also going to upload the documents for you. So in this case, this is what you get from Affinity. It lists your auth number, the dates of your authorization, uh, what they're actually eligible for. And then we're going to go in and that script information and we're going to pull out all of that uh, pertinent information and put that in there for you. And then we also upload the lens enhancement sheet. So once it gets to optical and they're working with, you know, the materials, all of that's there for the optician or, you know, the eyewear consultant when they're working with them. So that's uploaded in there. Okay. Let's close this one. We want to do this one. So we're saying that this patient has Blue Cross Blue Shield, but when we went to verify their insurance, that Blue Cross Blue Shield plan is no longer active. So what we're going to do is we're going to do this the same way, but we're actually going to verify this as invalid. I'm still going to put that there to let them know Blue Cross Blue Shield is no longer active, and I'm going to save that. Then I'm going to close and I don't want to do what I did just a minute ago, but this will turn red and that lets you know when you're looking ahead, anything that's red is something that's invalid. There's a problem. There's something wrong with it that will key you in to let you know what you need to look at. Great, Cindy. Yeah, it's it's a good overview of of kind of the data shows shows kind of where to, what level of detail we're getting and 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 where we're uh, you know where you're pre presenting it. Um, let me let me follow up with a couple of questions. Um, uh, and Dr. Gilmore alluded to this. You know, what what's the responsibility on the practice side? You know, what information do they need to get from the patient so that you guys can get the job done? Right. The, the most important thing is, is having a copy of the patient's insurance card. Of course, if it's a new patient, unless you're using some kind of uh, program that will, you know, allow a patient to scan that in or something like that. Uh, it could be a, a patient that's an established patient that you already have a copy or something like that. But you can also get, you know, that information when a patient calls in to schedule, if you can get as much information as you can. So once that insurance information is entered here into the insurance pod, you know, we need to have as much as we possibly can um, to make sure that we're getting the appropriate benefits. Make sure that if there are prefixes to the numbers, like a Blue Cross Blue Shield plan, usually a three a three digit um, prefix we want to make sure all those are there we want to make sure all of those things are there we also want to make sure that when you're entering the patient into rev that you're using the patient's legal name because the legal name is what the patient's going to be set up under on their insurance so if we use nicknames a lot of times we can't find benefits um, but if you use that, um, you know, the legal name and make sure you have the date of birth and those things, it's just very important to have it. If a patient's already been in, scan those cards in because if something comes up and they say that, you know, it's inactive or it's something like that, we can still sometimes make some calls and find out who an employer switched to or something like that. So that gives us, you know, a lead to, to go on. Sounds good. Uh, and, one, and one other question, I, I know there are, um, you know, generally we're working the schedule, but I, I know there are certain appointments that uh, your team will not bother getting benefits. Can you just kind of go over that for everyone so that, to kind of know what, which, which appointments we're doing and which ones we're not? Sure. Uh, we're going to do everything that's on your schedule except for, we're not going to do cataract post-op visits. Um, it, it's a global, it's a global service. It's um, if the surgeon was able to do the surgery and we get the co-management or the office gets the co-management on it, we know that we're in that global period. So we know that, that that's good. Um, the other thing is, is we don't do straight uh, contact lens eval 
encounters because normally the patient's already been in and has been seen and and had that availability so we're not going to you know gather that information again just for a contact lens fit uh, the other area is um, we have um, and when I say when I say cataract post-op I also mean like um, you know, any kind of laser surgery, anything like that, sure. because anything that falls within that global period. So, so post-ops um, and I lost my whole train of thought here. So, you know, the post-ops, the right. optical encounters, sure. uh, a patient just coming in, maybe, maybe an optical schedules patients to come in just to see the optician. Sure. We're not going to just get that, you know, yeah. that encounter. All right, great. I'm going to take the uh, screen back from you, if that is okay. okay. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, the next thing we want to, oh, there's a demo. Um, uh, a little bit on pricing or a lot about on pricing. So, so we had some questions. We had some questions, Paul. Did we get all those questions asked? Answered? I did. I was going to save them to the end, but you want to do them now for the? Are they, oh no, that's fine. Let's specific? do this now. We'll do those at the end. Okay. I was just going to do the Q, Q, Q and A at the end, but uh, I'll just buzz through pricing real quick. We do um, our pricing is a per patient verified model. Um, that, like I said, that includes both the medical and the vision side. It starts at three seventy five per patient, and as you can see, there are volume tiers, uh, volume uh, uh, discounts uh, with tiers. Uh, and much like our billing, we do monthly bill, uh, monthly uh, invoices, and you know there are no long-term contracts. So this is something that you can sign up for, and if for some reason it's not working in your practice from a workflow perspective or whatever, um, we just ask for 60 days uh, notice on it. So uh, that's the, the the pricing model. We do have a promotion going through the end of Q1, so there's still a couple of weeks left in that. Um, 21% uh, off uh, for 2021 uh, uh, for for 60 days if you get signed up for uh, um, by the, by the end, end of March. So happy to take uh, any any um, opportunities there. So with that, let's uh, jump into questions, Dave. Um, so well, one of the questions. questions from, yeah, yeah we have it. three here. For VSP authorizations, are all benefits on one authorization and can they be separated, one for exam and one for materials? I think, Cindy, that's for you. Yes, uh, absolutely. So when we are working in the startup process with an office, that's one of the things that we ask is if you want one authorization, and I think it all depends on how offices are doing checkout. Is somebody in optical taking care of the whole situation, putting in the exam and all, or is your front desk doing one and your optical doing the other? So yes, we can split that VSP off for you. So another question uh, related to that, for the example where you had Blue Cross, Blue Shield, and VSP, do you let the practice know if the BSBC, BSBS BCBS insurance has termed? Uh-huh. Well, in a case like the one that I showed, we had a patient showing a Blue Cross Blue Shield, which we said was no longer active. And then we had the SP, which was active. If one of the insurances in there is verified, then it's going to be marked verified valid. But we're going to have in that script on there exactly what, what the problem is. So they're going to see that their VSP is okay. They need to check. The patient might have a new Blue Cross Blue Shield card. They may have something like that that they need to get from the patient. Hey, Dave, Dave I, got, so, I mean, got a question yeah. here for uh, Dr. Gilmore, if I can direct one to, to, to Wayne. Uh, how, how long did it take for the transition to we verify in your practice? Oh, I, I mean, I mean, it's pretty quick. I mean, the, the training was easy and, you know, they, the, and she did, if, she, if she, I did, I missed it, but, you know, the information's put in what, three different places. So it's easy to find. Um, we go through the charts uh, a couple of days ahead anyway, and we have a little routing sheet that we print off Rev and then we write some key things on there just so I have it. The doctor has it and the staff has it, but that's something we do as we're going through to make sure the person's, uh, just a little thing we do um, up front, but uh, so it was pretty quick. I mean, it's pretty intuitive. I mean, you know, something I didn't mention is, you know, 
and this shouldn't ever play in a role, but you know, I do, I, you know, if a patient needs a test, you know, have they met their deductible, you know, it's right there. You always know if they've met their deductible and, you know, and I'm always aware of, you know, that and before I didn't know. And so sometimes, you know, it, I might, but anyway, so that's, that's kind of nice, but it's, it's all right there and it's easy to find and, and uh, the learning curve is quick. I mean, it's just, I mean, it's, you know, the benefits are, it's right there. You know, you got a deductible is the copay is, it's all just, it's in black and white and it's really easy. Okay, thanks. Dave, more? Yes, a couple other questions. Uh, another one for Cindy. If the patient isn't aware that they have a secondary insurance, can RevCycle obtain the information? Sometimes we can. Um, depending, you know, if we're working on a platform or if we're making a phone call, um, sometimes we do find out that they have a secondary. Um, we can't guarantee it, but sometimes we are able to find that out. Okay, excellent. Paul, I guess this one is for you. Is there an option for medical insurance verification only? Um, the, the answer to that is uh, uh, not officially. Um, so for, from a workflow perspective, uh, we can customize things a little bit um and, and and not do the vision but it doesn't affect the pricing right so if that's a question to, to reduce pricing the answer is no uh, if there are some workflow issues for some reason um you know, the, you know cindy and her team can do that um, we can filter out certain appointments based on encounter type and things like that so there is some level of customization uh, you can do uh, if it's a pricing related question then the answer would, would be no it's the same um, excellent good Here's another question. Do you have to have all of our logins? Um, yes, we do. Um, so, because as you know, if we're going into something like Affinity or IMED or, you know, something like that, we would have to be into your office to be able to, we would have to be logged in um, under your office credentials in order to pull authorizations for your patient. So, uh, that is one thing that we gather. Anyone that uh, already uses RevCycle for billing, we already have most of that information. Um, but otherwise, we have a form that we send out, and we do need that. It's all, it's all secure. You know, we, you know, we, we use, you know, so, something that keeps it all secure. So let me let me speak to that too, because I, you know, in in Revolution itself, you know, you could you set them up as a user, and then the, those that use it know that you can control what access they have so they, they tell you what access that you want them to have and and um and just like you know everything else i mean they're they're you sign a baa with them so i mean everything's but you know everything is like it should be for medical you know hipaa and, and all that stuff it's very very controlled very safe and and it's the information you want them to have because they're doing that part of your office for you i mean my accountant has a login to revolution and they have, you know, that we just let them see what they need to see for an accounting person, but they they can log in too. I mean, that's a it's a wonderful piece to Revolution that allows that integration without you having to, you know, do Still stuff yourself. Stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, hey, D Dave, I see a couple of um, pricing-ish related uh, questions, so let me take both of them. One is, how is the <clears throat> tiered pricing determine uh, number of patients verified monthly, weekly? Uh, Etc. Um, and, and the answer is monthly, right? So those tiers I showed you, and, and I'm happy to you know email out to anybody that, that uh, wants wants to see it. Um, uh, basically, at the end of each month, we tally up uh, the the production, the number of point, appointments that we verified, um, and, uh, and you know, then just plug plug that into the tiers and, and charge accordingly. Um, the other question was, uh, is there a trial period? Um, and, and there isn't really a trial period per se. Uh, we, you know, we have this promo going um, for, for uh, you know, 60 days at a, at, at a discount. Um, but re really, our, our contracts are not long-term contracts. So you, you can get out of them uh, with 60 days notice at any time. Uh, so uh, in some respects, people, you know, you can kind of, kind of, kind of sign up as a, as a, tr as a trial in, in that light. But there's no free trial. Obviously, we've got staff that we have, you know, that are, that are, that are doing this. Um, so we don't, don't have the ability to do that. Excellent. 
Good. Keep keep bringing those questions. We have a couple of others for Cindy. Do you even verify OON benefits for VSP? Um, the auto network, Dave. Right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah I know. <laughs> okay. So for VSP and any of those visions, we cannot. Um, unless your practice is using something like um, Patch or Anagram that actually gives those out-of-network benefits, we are not able to get them um, from, say, VSP or IMED, anything like that. First of all, if you're out-of-network with, with VSP, you probably don't even have a provider number or a login to their portal or anything like that. So unless you're actually using one of those other programs that shows you what out-of-network benefits a patient has for vision, that would be the only way we're able to get that. Excellent. A couple more and we'll, we'll, we'll wrap it up. Do you verify Medicare? We do. And what we verify with Medicare is we're verifying um, their effective date. And we know that, you know, it's a, an 80-20 situation on, on Medicare. We're, we also know what their deductible is, and we let them know if that deductible has been met. And if it hasn't been met, we give them the information of what's left over on the deductible to be met. Excellent, excellent, excellent. I think that a that, that's a wrap. It rounds out uh, the webinar. Uh, Dr. Gilmer, I can't say enough thanks for your insight. Really, really helpful and fresh. And uh, I think it gives us a great overview and, and gave us a, a great overview. Cindy, perfect. Exactly what we needed. And I think very practical to see how everything nests within and, and where you go and how you see everything within Revolution EHR. And Paul, thank you for your time today. And I think that's it. If you'd like to contact us, we have this promo going. Just reach out to Paul or Christine or Sarah, just P. Harchi at revcycle-partners.com. Or you can jump on our website, uh, revcyclepartners.com. Uh, actually, it's revcycle-partners.com. And hit the We Credentialing uh, or We Verify page, ex excuse me, and you can sign up there as well. So reach out to us. We'd be glad to chat with you. Hey, I think Dr. that's Gilmer. it. Hey, Dr. Gilmer, thanks oh. very much for uh, giving us your Thank time you. today. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you. All right. Have a great rest of the You're day. Welcome. Hello. Hey, Wayne, you still there? I am. I think we're good. All right, guys. Thanks. Hey, I really appreciate, appreciate it, it uh, Dr. Gilmer. Uh, very, very helpful. You're Thanks. You're welcome. Talk to you later. Bye. I right, take care. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye.